Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got an update to the Trey Tuesday series this week, and we'll kick things off by finding out what happened to our old items. The morning after the airing date of episode 2, the Harley Benton ended up selling to a longtime fan of the show who just wanted to be kicking around at his house so he can pick it up and play. I think you'll be surprised just how nice that guitar actually is. So I had it on my website for $425. After we take out PayPal's fee, we were left with just a little under $410, and then it cost about $36 to ship it to him. So taking out our cost and fees against the sales price, we were left with a profit of $203.61. Hey, we didn't do too bad there. Now you might be wondering, why would somebody pay $425? for a Harley Benton. When last episode we had discussed that it was only like 360 bucks to have a brand new one shipped to your door. So it ended up being that that was an earlier version of the Benton than what they're selling today. So I'm not sure if that fretboard material was correct or not, but that one had the chunky neck, I also did a little bit of improvements to it, like polished up the frets, reshaped the nut a little bit, just a bit of TLC. So I was pretty confident that would sell due to the value added services, which is a great way to get started if you don't have a lot of money. Buy up really dirty old guitars, clean them up, breathe new life into them, and get them to a buyer who appreciates that kind of stuff. There were a few interesting trade offers on it as well, like this Jackson Kelly, KE3 in Crimson Swirl. However, I was waiting on photos and it sold in the meantime. And there was also an offer for a 70s Crestline Telly, but same situation, sold before photos could get there. Next that sold was that one page K calendar. It went for $5 plus shipping, so after fees, we got a little over $4. Thanks for the support, AJ. Following that up, the tuner sold the very next day to Jonathan, who was having a hard time finding a great set to bring his 1977 Les Paul Standard back to stock. I'd say he did pretty good on that, because this set was pretty clean, all things considered, with just a little bit of patina around the Gibson logos that could clean off, should he wish to. But I've learned to leave that alone because some guys want the aged parts. So take the PayPal fee out, and the shipping cost of $12.40, we net ourselves a cool $123 profit. Next up, Emmanuel and David Marinak decided they wanted to take home that cool Eric Clapton newspaper clipping. However, the catch was they're in Croatia, so they had to pay $20 to get it to them, but we net a cool $4. The power of global mail. So that left us with $620 within our cash coffer, so I went shopping, but this time not online. I decided to try out Facebook Marketplace because I've had success here in the past. Usually in my area, there's nothing good, but I was pleasantly surprised to see this weird Series 10 guitar for $150. He said it had some paint work and a few replaced parts. It might be trash, but who knows, it might be treasure. And I also checked out what else he was selling, and I found some pedals. So I decided to message him to see if he would go 100 bucks on the guitar and 60 on the pedals. He approved the guitar, but shot us down on the pedals. So I said, all right, just bring him to the meetup, I'll take a look at him then. Because I was thinking, if these were really clean, I'll give him the 75 he was wanting. Now when I got there to the meetup, they were way worse condition than I was expecting. But we were able to come to agreement at 70 bucks, because I thought these might be good trade and if nothing else, I know I could net about 100 after fees and shipping in a bulk quick sale lot if it came down to it. So all in all, 170 bucks? Let's check them out. So this thing actually ended up being pretty cool. When I first saw it, I instantly thought Eddie Van Halen. It's got these painted on stripes, which is what the refinished job ended up being, because this red color is definitely the original. You can tell the quality of the paint over top of the red is definitely not the same, but it gives you striped vibes, and it just has a single humbucker in the bridge, and it's slanted, very similar to how Van Halen did it. But then when I got home, I started looking at the design, and he told me that this came out of like South Carolina or Georgia, I can't remember which. And then I pieced two and two together what this probably was meant to represent. I was like, ah, no, not again. But let's just say it's a fun red guitar with blue stripes. But I've never heard of this Series 10 before, so I did a little bit of research. And here's what I was able to come up with. From approximately 1983 through 1998, there were these Series 10 electrics that were made by the brand Bentley, which from my understanding was a subshoot off of Alvarez. So to put that in terms that you might understand better, Alvarez is akin to Gibson, whereas Bentley was the Epiphone division of that. However, Bentley started as acoustic guitars, but when they started doing electric guitars, they rebranded them the Series 10. So it's not like Alvarez, Bentley, then Series 10. Bentley and Series 10 is apparently on the same level within the company, just acoustic and electric. But all these brands were under St. Louis Music. But after 1998, Bentley transformed into the Austin line, which I have heard of Austin guitars before because, hey, that's my name, and the guy that I bought this from was also named Austin. So that's why I called this episode such an Austin deal because there 
there were three Austins involved in here in a roundabout way. But it seems there were a lot of cool Series 10 guitars. In researching whether I should buy the Super Strat or not, I found a cool one that kind of looked like a The Paul. They made some really nice Rickenbacker copies, but then there were other Jackson, Kramer, Super Strat-like designs. It seems they range anywhere between 100 to 500 for the Strats, and there's people that are asking thousands plus on the Rick copies, but who knows? That's why I was pretty comfortable at 100 bucks, thinking, yeah, we could probably make a little bit here to get us closer to our goal. Of which it was actually really hard to find the single humbucker variation, and I think it's one of the coolest, so I'm not too upset that we ended up finding this one to document. Now, as far as issues, he had told me one of these tuners had been replaced. You can see it right here because the back dome is a slightly different shape. There's also a different tuning head on it. But then he had mentioned that one of the ferrules is missing on the string. Okay, I might have a spare, but then I noticed this after I got it home. There's some dead frets on here, so the 11th fret on the E string and the 17th fret. So maybe I'll see if I can mess with the truss rod to put a little bit more relief in the neck, see if that would help. Or I guess I, I could try the fret kisser and see if that <laughs> fixes the slightly high fret, but everything else seems to play great. And this is a surprisingly resonant guitar, like it has no reason to be as good as it is. The whole thing just vibrates. and it's pretty acoustically resonant for one of these style guitars. Some other things I notice is you've got some small finish cracks in the neck pocket, but it's nothing too crazy. But let's check out these pedals. Pretty much the only time I deal with pedals is in the Trade Tuesday series because they have a wide audience and they're usually pretty plentiful. So this is the Ernie Ball Ambient Delay. I don't really know too much about this. I'd never heard of it before, but we've got some controls that we can play around with. They cost about $200 new, and on reverb, it looks like they sell between $100 to $120 used. Now this one's pretty scratched up, so it might sell on the lower end of that, but it should be okay. And I thought that since this only has one pickup anyways, it'd be fun to demo some effects with it. Next is the Golden Horse. So this is supposed to be like a budget clone in a much smaller profile. We'll see how it sounds. He was saying it was his favorite out of the three despite it being the cheapest. Brand new, they're running about 35, but since there's not a lot on the used market, it seems they sell between 20 and 30. And then everyone's favorite, Metal Zone. <laughs> this thing, uh, it's very beat up. It's scratched, it's been thrown around a bit, but it's a Metal Zone if you're into that. They're about 120 bucks new, but they sell between 50 and 70 used. But apparently some guys say if you use it in the effects loop of your amp as a preamp, you can actually have much better results. So I'll toy around with it. See if I like it and hope and pray that these work because I didn't test them beforehand. <laughs> so let's go ahead and check the guitar out on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing demo. Inside the Series 10, so this pickup looks just like a DiMarzio. I was kind of hoping maybe it would be, but then there's this weird black spacer around it. So once I saw that, I was like, nah, that's just something to look like it. And sure enough, when you look on the back, it looks similar to, but is not exactly a DiMarzio. And for reference, when I first got it, this screw was missing. Thankfully, the spring was still there, and I found a screw in my parts drawer that kind of fit. It's not the exact style it's supposed to be, and it stands out like a sore thumb, but better than being missing. We've got our output jack right here over on the side. That's a really loose output jack, though. I think I'll see if I can bend it to make it work a bit better. That pickup within the circuit is pretty hot, 10.43k ohms. But here's what our route looks like, nothing too crazy. Just a single humbucker route, slightly askew. As far as our trem system, looks like your typical Stratocaster bridge, six saddles and all. I do not have a trem bar for this. But check this out, not only is it a single humbucker, it's just a single volume control on this thing. I'm not sure if this is the original knob, but I love it, because you've got three gripping layers to it. It's really smooth and easy to use. And as we were talking earlier, it's the blue paint stripes that were added on top. They're slightly proud of the red finish. This is all nice and glossy, whereas this is more of a matte finish. It's probably just a spray paint can if I had to guess. You can see there's a few areas where they didn't do the best of a job of masking. But if you had a buffing wheel, I think you could turn that into gloss because look at this area, that's pretty glossy. And right here is also almost completely gloss where somebody's arm has been rubbing against it. So if you don't like the whole matte and texture feel, looks like you could take it to another level. I need to get myself one of them buffing wheels. As far as condition, we got a couple of dings. Looks like they did some sort of a red drop fill. 
and I couldn't see the wood exposed anywhere. I would guess it's alder, basswood, something relatively inexpensive. I think it's safe to say that whatever this is made of is not the highest quality wood in the world. But we've got our regular maple fretboard with most likely a rosewood fretboard. It's got 21 frets. I definitely would not say they're huge, but definitely medium style. We've got acrylic dot inlays. And we do have some fretware, mainly in the cowboy cord areas. I just did a polish on these frets, so it's kind of hard to see, but you can definitely see right there, somebody played this quite a bit. Then with my gauges, I would say it's closest to a 10 inch fretboard radius. So somewhere around nine and a half or 10. And it looks like we're going after Fender 25 and a half inch scale length. But for more detailed specs, we get 1.67 inches at the nut width, 2.04 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.86. That increases to 0.94 by the 12th, so a relatively thin neck. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. This has more of a D-shaped neck profile in my opinion, because there's a shoulder, then kind of a slightly flatter spot on the back of the neck, and then another shoulder. But it's not like completely flat on the back. You can tell it's still slightly curving. The nut has definitely been replaced on this. You can see somebody put a small shim underneath there. And then underneath the truss rod cover, it looks like this. For my use, the truss rod seems to work, and the cover itself is just this trapezoid shape. And I look through my parts drawer, and yes indeed, I found an old Klusen bushing that just happened to fit. It doesn't quite look the same, but if we have an adopted tuner tip on this one, who really cares as long as we have that there so the tuner doesn't bend and probably helps it stay in tune better. This tuner is really stiff and I think it's that one that's also stiff. So they work, but some of them aren't the most comfortable. But here's our Series 10 logo. We've got some dings along the edge. It looks like some sort of a scratch right there. Definitely a Jackson-like headstock. All strung back up, a few things I would like to point out. The nut is not glued into place, but if you tune it up to pitch while holding it, it stays. And I tried messing with it to get that note to ring, but the truss rod adjustment didn't give us enough clearance, so I just put it back to where it was. I'm going to say the action is absolutely abysmal, but there is room for improvement. And we only have a little bit of adjustment room left on our saddles, so it's possible you might need to shim the neck or something. That's not my area of expertise though, so let's flip over to the back, which with our back plates off looks like this. Pretty basic trim system in here. If it was my guitar, I'd probably put a couple of screws down here and just completely block it off. But I was admiring the solder work right here for our ground wire, and then I followed it into our cavity, and then sure enough, it wasn't actually attached, so I'll have to fix that. But otherwise, that seems like a very basic pot with a very basic capacitor, and this was definitely a one-size-fits-all route for all their models, because you definitely don't need that much room for one pot. And unfortunately, I can't get to the output jack because I don't have that tool. I need one that's slightly bigger than this, but it works well enough as is, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. We're looking good now, but our back definitely has lots of scratches, nicks and dings from use. You can definitely tell somebody had the back plate off while they were playing for the most part because there's lots of scratches from a belt buckle or something. Further proof of that is they lost one of the original screws, so just put one random one in here. And you've got some strap rash, but you can see our nice little cutaway over here that hugs your body. So we've got a maple neck. This definitely started life as satin, but it's been played into a nice gloss. And I kind of finished the polishing job there just to make it nice and even. And it was kind of interesting to see how this headstock was constructed. So this is all one piece, the neck that is bolted onto there. But then they scarf join it to have a little bit of a triangular piece, and then they do a regular join line right there to make the pointy headstock. So you've got three pieces on here. And here's a quick look at our tuners. Also and done, it's pretty comfortable at 7 pounds, 4.6 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds.
phenomenally impressed with the way this thing sounds. I wasn't expecting much of anything out of this humbucker, but yeah, that's got a great sound. So we'll turn that pedal off and do some cleans. Okay, very punchy and aggressive is the best way to put it. If you're trying to do the 80s hair metal stuff and even some grungy stuff from the 90s, it works incredibly well. I would not suggest replacing this. However, I, I think I would suggest a professional setup. It doesn't stay in tune the best, but it's not so much the tuners that affect your tuning stability. It's about the setup, how the nut is cut and everything else. But since two of the tuners are kind of hard to turn, I would just suggest replacing those anyways, because this guitar's got good bones. It just needs a little bit of help to get to that whole next level. And I could tell that before I even played this guitar at all because of the whole resonancy factor. But let's go ahead and play with our pedals now. Just as a fun fact, this is what I always use in my reviews and demos. It's called a Red Rocks. <laughs> We've got our pony in. So here's our clean tone. That pedal adds a little bit of like reverb or something to it. <laughs> For 30 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong with that. You can tweak with it to be like super crazy or a little bit more dialed back, but I would say I like it almost just as much as my Red Rocks. The echoey effect kind of has a nice resonance to it, although that might be seen as undesirable depending on what you're pairing that with. Now we'll try our metal zone out. <laughs> Very nasally. <laughs> Kind of hurts my ears. It's like you have earmuffs on or something. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Okay, I'm sure there's better ways to dial that in. <laughs> it sounds okay for some stuff. Not my favorite. That's nice that you got a foot switch, you can kind of control the effect. The big question is, does it do Big Sur Moon? And the answer is kind of. does that is good enough for me now that we know about the series 10 what are my final thoughts on this thing wow best hundred bucks i've spent in a while <laughs> it's great i mean sure there's quirks to it like there's a couple of frets that don't really work but thankfully for my playing style i don't run into the 11th fret on the e string too often nor do i play in the solo registers so I really did not notice any of that dead fret situation, but that would just be a quick level recram job away from making it perfect. But this pickup sounds phenomenal. I don't know what it is. Sometimes these cheap pickups can just sound good. I was able to get the action a lot lower. Those saddles had more life left in them than I thought. So I wouldn't really worry about your action too much on this. I mean, this is a guitar that's good enough to keep and just play and practice with. It inspired me to play music I don't normally do. I'm not going to keep it because I know realistically I don't get that much time to play outside of these reviews and demos. So the way Trade Tuesday works, if you're interested in trading me something for this guitar, you can email me at tradetrogley at gmail.com. If you don't want to mess around with trades, I also have it on my website, trogleysguitarshow.com, for what I consider top absolute value for something like this. And if it doesn't sell or trade, within a week that's when i open it up to offers so this one is up for grabs and all three of our pedals same rules applies to these just keep in mind these pedals are a little bit worn but they appear to function just fine for my testing of them so all right troglodytes don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.